Look what I've done! <laughs> we should be good. Guys, we're late. We're late. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it again. <laughs> Hang on a second, you guys, because every, every single time, this is what happens. Um, can you... No, I, no, shut that off for a second, shut that off. I know that you guys can hear me. I'm trying to figure out why you can't see me again, because... Is just how it goes. You guys can hear me. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. Um. Why is it doing this? Do I have it? Hello, everybody. Let me check if this USB port is like fried or something. Oh, you're using that one. Never mind. Hmm. Let me just describe the scene to you. I am sipping my Egyptian milk tea. <laughs> and Tiffany is losing her hair. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, it, but it never usually does this, though. Usually I can fix it, like, really quickly. But for some reason, it's not letting me this time. Why? in all the way here you just go to your eos utility settings and see if it's registering there well that's the thing. that's where it's going through right yeah or that, is it even active that's the thing though like i can't um i can't play both of these things at the same time hmm. so hmm my mom texted me. I know. I can. I, I see what you guys see. I see the EOS MacBook utility. Like, I see that sign. <laughs> but uh, I don't. I don't know how to fix it this time. This is weird. Let me go get a different cord, you guys. I'll be right back. Sorry. Well, if you guys dislike this video, we'll never know about it. <laughs> well, she's getting another cord, so. We used to spend all my nights at the bar room. Liquor was the only lord ever known. But then you rescued me from reaching the bottom. That was it. There we go. It, okay, I guess that cord is fried. Well, ignore the first three minutes. This is going in the trash. Sorry about that, guys. So that time, that time it wasn't my fault. That time it was the cord. So <laughs> uh, we buy cheap things around here. Uh, because they work until they don't. Sorry, can you move? I need to sit down. Get over here. Good girl. Okay. So like Davison said, we do have a bunny in here. She's on the couch. Stay mm -hmm. here. You can stay for a second. Um, but yeah, so just chilling with you guys tonight. And... How is everybody doing? <laughs> I'm stressed out already. <laughs> no, it doesn't really stress me out. These things happen. We got 22 people here. Marin is feeling ta-da. <laughs> Crystal is feeling heart. And Milan is feeling whoop whoop. <laughs> Pretty good. It's five there, so the sun has just set. Yeah, but if the sun is just set at five, is that really a good time? It's not. I'm really sad about the sun setting so early now. That that's too little. Right there. A little bit better. I get tired earlier too. It's just like it's just, me to bed. Yeah. Well, I mean when I get off of work, I go out to feed the rabbits and it's dark already, so or at least yeah. like when I get off of work I like I'll go out there, but it's like already getting dark and it makes me feel like I need to feed everybody and close everything up at five. Feed <laughs> So, taking a break from studying. What you studying, Candace? 
You gonna be a astronaut? Studying like college or high school? Return him any? <laughs> Drive him these uh, these uh, fireman trucks. You go to school for that? <laughs> well, I'll show you guys this little bun bun. Grad school to be a nurse practitioner. Wonderful. That's very cool. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll schedule for you. <laughs> Look at uh, you probably don't know what my job is, so I'll explain that later. You can explain it. You're looking at the bunny. Isn't she cute? She's so cute. I don't know if I'm keeping her yet, but she's Dolce's daughter. She's only eight weeks old, and she's like a big, big chonk. A heckin' chonker! She's, she's a heckin' chonker. She's very big. <laughs> But she's very shy, too. She takes after her mom. Anyway, explain what you do for work, Jameson. The people would like to know. Sure. Um, I work for Lutheran Health Network primarily. We're a division of the network called uh, Shared Service Center. Uh, so they combine everything like billing, records, uh, communicating with insurance, and what I do, which is scheduling. I schedule for doctors and nurse practitioners within the Lutheran Health Network across eight different states. Um, I cover primarily Florida and... Uh, Indiana. Um, so if your doctor's in the Lutheran Health Network and you call the schedule, you might get somebody like me. You might get James. <laughs> you might get me. Um, and today, uh, after months of waiting, um, I get pulled into a room and I get told that I'm going to become a lead. And you got a promotion I'm today. getting a promotion. And that means I get to train other people to do what I do. And uh, hopefully it comes with a decent pay raise and very exciting. I'm I'm pretty happy about it. I've wanted to do that since the day I heard those positions existed. I love teaching. I love training. Uh, so it's been a really great day for me. And when it couldn't get any better, I had Jimmy John's. Yeah. Well, I told him to go get Jimmy John's like a minute before he was getting ready to pass it. <laughs> you cannot beat the number two. The number two. The well, not the number two you're thinking of, but the uh, the the big John with the with the roast beef. <laughs> mm. Look at her, Jameson. She's, She's so perfect. Little Drizzle, so cute. That's what Jameson's calling her Drizzle. Call her Drizzle. I, I don't know if it's gonna fit. We've been going with the whole. We have Dolce, Clove, uh, Brulee. Brutally destroy that like button if you think it should be Drizzle. I don't know if it should be Drizzle, but he's just saying like caramel Drizzle. We're at fourteen right now. Fourteen right now absolutely humiliate it till it begs for mommy until we get up to 20 and then i will know that it's drizzle <laughs> we have 26 people on <sighs> it's just i feel like it's one of those um really chill hangouts today especially with the technical difficulties at the beginning that's fine though we just had a a huge i did a huge like q a thing on instagram um Friday evening to Saturday evening. Like I got so many questions on there. So I got to answer a whole bunch of your questions. So then I was just like, I wonder if anybody's actually going to have anything to ask me on the live stream. doesn't matter though. It's, I mean, it's still fun to just talk about life and, and whatnot, but yeah, very, very, it's been a good day. I feel it's like been, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. And I have a special announcement to make because you absolutely pulverized the snot out of that <laughs> thumbs up. Um, this bunny's official name is Drizzle, so. I don't know. We don't even know if I'm keeping it yet. Can you put, like, a confetti filter, like, on this computer? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't even know if we're keeping her yet. We'll see. She's very, very cute, though. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so thank you for the congrats, JK. Um, let's see. Love the video started raising rabbits last May from Clarence Creek, Ontario, Canada. Well, hello in Canada. Um, I don't know where what kind of rabbits is. oh Ontario though no, we're up here. so it's always fun to see what kind of rabbits uh, are being raised by uh, people getting on here Jameson just finished Far Cry 6 uh, I did I did I finished Far Cry 6 it did not live up to the hype that they started bringing in freaking February of this year <laughs> I always get nervous when they start advertising AAA titles like that because the YouTube ads, you cannot, you just, you just, you can't escape it. It's like the trailers are everywhere. And then 
yeah it just kind of died down for like three or four months and then they came it's just like oh this game wasn't worth the four hours of gameplay and 50 hours of map oh i didn't watch all of it but i saw the ending and it looked like it was very unsatisfying like i don't want to spoil it for anybody yeah but just the way it well, ended i'm sure that i mean i think that we have some people that game that follow so yeah don't spoil it you guys can spoil oh, a it. lot of gonna... most of i feel like most of my followers though probably don't play video games i would assume i don't know no nah. We're getting some questions in. Kayla Eclipse is having her first litter of rabbits in February. Congratulations. That will be very fun. February is a good... Other than... Well, okay. I would say February is a good month for having rabbits, and I think it is. But also, February seems to be the month where we get the most snow dumped on us. Like, end of January, February, we always seem to get, like, a huge... That just seems to be where winter starts around here anymore. Well, I mean, it starts... It starts, like, now, basically, but, like, it lasts. Like, the worst of it we usually get in, like, January, February, I feel like. Um. Manda, you found my hat! Wait, what? I'm, I'm serious. I looked at that comment. I didn't know you wrote it. And I'm like, you found my sock hat. Give it back! <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it was you. Thank you for finding my hat, Mom and Love. I've been looking for it everywhere. When did you lose it? Probably one of the last times I was there. Oh. Well, I lost my favorite sweater at convention. Then I was told that it was going to be shipped back to me because somebody found it, but I have not heard anything about that again yet, so I'm very sad. It was the camo one with the flowers on it. I, I wore it for a bunch of videos. You guys probably don't remember, but it was my favorite sweater. If you all want to like a uh, Ko-Fi or something to get to be a new sweater, hey, please you do. can post that link. You can post links and stuff in the chat. That would be what link? Ko-Fi link? Mm -hmm. Or anything. Any link. Um, okay. How much and how many times do you feed your rabbit pellets? Uh, I'm assuming you mean like uh, how many times a day and, and how much. Yeah, okay. Um, they're free fed. Um, I feed unlimited pellets to all of my rabbits. So they have them all the time. Um, it's like Olive Garden never ending breadsticks. Yeah. I used to limit oh, right the amount of pellets um, when I first got into the meat rabbit breeds, but um, I actually found out that it's it's better for six class, at least if you're showing them. It's to me anyway, it's better to free feed them. That's what's worked for us. So uh, when I had like smaller rabbits like Dutch, I would ration their feed, but I don't do that anymore with these guys. Because the goal with the babies especially is that we want them to grow as quickly as possible. So uh, for the most part, they just get free fed. Even my breeders, even my bucks. And on the off chance that I would have a buck that would eat until he's overweight, which I don't. Most of my bucks like self-limit themselves. Um, but I would, I would be more... Like I would, I would ration the bucks more than I would ration the does, but I don't really ration anybody here because nobody gets overweight because everybody's always working. So I hope that answers your question. You do need to worry about weight sometimes, but for the most part, like, I don't know. I just don't have any rabbits that, that really overeat yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> do you feed them more in the winter to help the, with their winter coat? Hey, really quick. Is that Mike? Like. It can hear us properly, right? Um, I think everybody can hear us. Yeah. It just um, looks like there's a shield on it. If you can hear us fine, drop a $5 code 5. No, don't do that. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, just let us know we need to turn it up. Yeah, um, let us know if there's anything that needs to be turned up or anything like that. Because uh, right now, I can see the green light coming on whenever we talk. If it gets to yellow, uh, it means cool it, air buster. And if it gets to red, it's slow down! <laughs> It looks like, is it turned the wrong way, though? I was just wondering, because there's that little shield on it. Yeah, that shield is there for when I'm singing pretty into it, but I bet it doesn't pick up the plosives. Oh, okay. Anyway. It won't make a difference <laughs> in um, this situation. What was that question that I, I totally passed um, over? Do you stuff your bunnies in the winter to help with their coats? Stuff? No. Um, do you feed them more in the winter to help with their coat? <laughs> oh, well, 
Um, I just, like I said, I just feed them unlimited. So, yes. <laughs> Bottomless breadsticks. Actually, um, where's my cord at? How come I didn't snip back or whatever? I don't know. Because that cord that I have is not long enough to do that. I'll just sit here like this. Um, absent. Call Tiffy Dearest. No, don't do that. It's probably like right around, it's probably in there. Maybe. I can go grab it. It's, it's fine. I'm going to go grab it. She said fine. <laughs> Absintha says, do I still draw in my free time? And yes, I don't have a lot of free time. Um, I wish I had more free time, but I do still draw every once in a while. And the subject still remains to be wolves. <laughs> so if that answers your question. Thank you, Gabe. Yeah. Um, but yes, I do still. Jameson, people actually giving us Ko-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> it's just business. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Yeah, for real, thank you. Give me a little bit. I can sit back. I'm, I mean, we just had a we just had a conversation the other day how like there are some people that put in their videos like multiple times to hit the well, subscribe button and I like was... button. All you have to do is ask once in the funniest way possible, and your likes jump to fourteen to twenty three. I was just <laughs> irritated because I, you guys know. I mean, I'm on I'm a millennial, so I'm like watching a lot of YouTube, you know, all the time basically. And so I was watching a video yesterday. It was like a 10 or 15 minute video, like a how to video. And every like minute to minute and a half, there was like a little bell that went off. And it was, and it was like an arrow pointing to the subscribe button. And I'm just like, this type of begging makes me not want to subscribe at all. So I don't know if you guys feel that way. I, I just, I'm not one to do that. So if you ever wondered, no, I'm never going to beg anybody to subscribe. <laughs> I'm not that desperate. It's not. It's not what we do. I mean, I, I mean, I will say like and subscribe. I have no problem with that. But when you're saying it like every minute and a half to two minutes, then I probably won't. It's like Jameson said the other day when somebody tells you to do the dishes and you don't want to because they told you to. Okay. Let's see. I really need to pull this up on my phone so I can see you guys. You're not so far away. That other cord was so much longer, and I was planning on bringing my laptop on my lap. Obviously, that didn't work. Bring me some questions, babe. Oh, uh, I don't have a lot. Um, hello from Norway. <laughs> well, I mean, let's read. Hi people. from Norway. Let's read. P yes, hello from Norway. Well, hello from U.S. to Norway. My rabbit's favorite fruits. Um, my rabbits love apple and they do love banana. Banana's like a big favorite for most rabbits, actually. Um, I don't know. We usually just do apple and banana, I think. I've tried blueberries. Nobody really likes blueberries. Um, the weirdos, all of them. Yeah. Not, they don't like a lot of berries. My rabbits just mainly like apples and bananas when it comes to fruit. Um, Deborah, we have not raised the bunnies in a colony yet. I think we'd get that question a lot. Um, I think we have entertained the idea. Well, yeah, because I was actually, I was really thinking about doing that, um, with the garage after I decided not to get goats and I was like, we could put a colony in here. But then like, as I started thinking about it and like reality hit in. Also, if you hear rumbling, it's Ronan chewing on his venom bone. He's very loud, so sorry. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we were thinking about doing a colony, and and then like, just the whole like, reality of like we're we're breeding rabbits to show really. So um, we're basically just planning on doing like a six bay hutch on the inside of the garage now. So there is going to be another build video very soon. So I'm very excited about that, and it's just going to be like an indoor like hanging cages, sliding trays, which I know I said I was sick of trays, but like this design I think is going to be really cool. I think the quail hutch kind of changed my mind when it came to trays because I actually designed it the right way this time <laughs> because like in my really old hutch, I had the trays like they were literally like super close to the cage 
and like it was so hard to like remove the trays out of there all the time so um, we're not doing that this time we're gonna make it the right way and i think i'm actually gonna like it so we'll see um missed one uh shannon says my next door neighbor and i have silver fox rabbits my neighbor would like to breed her doe with my buck and we set the date for next week should i quarantine my buck after um quarantine um well with every I, I don't want to say with everything that's going around, but it depends on well, it depends on where you live. I probably would. I'd probably quarantine for maybe a week. Um because I mean also if it does she say she's using her buck as a stud for her neighbor? Is that what you said? Uh yes. Yeah. I and really like when you go over there, if you don't know your neighbor's rabbits well enough, really check the doe before you let him breed her. And make sure she doesn't have anything going on, like uh, like sickness or illness looking or, or like anything like that. Rabbits can have something called syphilis. And it's not the same as human syphilis. It's rabbit syphilis. And it affects, affects like the genitals and stuff like that. So um, it's it's highly contagious. So, so make sure, like flip her over, check that part of her and make sure there's nothing wrong there. Um, that's what I would I would say anyway, unless your rabbit or unless you know your neighbor really really well, I don't know. I would always check though, personally. In Milan, we do not have heaters for the rabbits in the winter or heat pads. Uh, we've actually winterized the hutch, and uh, it really does a good job of keeping the wind out. Um, you can actually see her do that in one of her videos uh, about winterizing the hutch. Um, if you just scroll her videos and take a look, you can see how you could do that yourself. Um, but I think we've established that rabbits, they are, uh, their ideal temperature is between like 40 and 60 degrees. So a little bit on the cooler side. Especially silver fox. Especially silver fox. Their fur is so long and thick. And we're actually breeding our creams to be kind of that way too. Um, that's kind of a whole other thing though. We're, we're basically experimenting with having like kind of a snowballed type of genetic trait here where the fur is like super, super dense. So... We're kind of experimenting with it, but yeah, rabbits do really well in the winter. You just want to make sure there's always two things, keep them dry and keep them out of the wind. Those are the main two things that you need to watch out for. Okay. How are the baby quails doing? The baby quails are doing very good. <laughs> and if we get to 30 likes, <laughs> I'm pulling a little nugget out of there to show you guys. Yes. Hit the like button. If we get to 30, Jameson will go get a baby quail. <laughs> raise the button to the ground <laughs> okay um let's see do you ever go by <laughs> do you ever go back and watch your videos to see how far your homestead has come you should be so proud it's been fun to watch well no but since you told us that we should be proud and that it's been fun to watch we don't have to go back and watch them. You've saved <laughs> you've saved us the trouble of picking apart each video to see how far we've come. I, I go back through the video. I'm first of all, thank you. Because it really does mean a lot. And I I feel like we definitely have come a long way. Um I've done a ton of work out there and I'm really proud of it. But also, when I go back through my old videos, I'm not necessarily looking at, like, the progress that I've made. I'm looking at, like, how awkward I was in front of the camera. And I'm, like, still awkward in front of the camera sometimes. I'm getting better. It's, like, a long, slow process that's, like, going, like, two years now. And, like, I'm still getting used to the camera. But, like, I don't know. It's, like... I'm mainly like watching me and I'm like, oh geez, like why? And like also my videography has gotten a lot better. I'm not saying it's like perfect now or anything. I'm just saying it's gotten a lot better since those videos because I was using um, my iPhone when I first started. So <laughs> it's it's been fun though, for sure. I feel accomplished, but I'm always like looking for more things to do. Will you ever get champagnes again? No. No. I got them oh we got a super chat. thank you nikki thank you so much that's awesome <laughs> nikki 
Nikki, 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 Renee. <laughs> you get a four bar for a four dollar. Thank you so much, Nikki, for supporting the channel and us. We deeply appreciate it. Um, but the champagnes, I will probably never get champagnes again. And it's, it's, I mean, we just had, we had them for a very short amount of time. I think September to December in 2019 and i just wasn't a huge fan they're just kind of they're kind of boring to me i don't know why i really don't know why so i'm sorry if you have champagnes i think they're great but like there's a champagne out there going <laughs> yeah i know i have the cream version of the argent but like not the champagne anymore i don't know i just i wasn't a huge fan the creams are a little bit different because they're more inquisitive, I feel like, but the champagnes were just kind of like, they just sat there and I don't know. They weren't really like super, I don't know. <laughs> they weren't very super. <laughs> super. Uh, Carrie Spencer, hi from Oregon. Hi, Oregon. Uh, just created a YouTube channel so I could comment, but let me tell you. Awesome. How much like cooler things are on youtube <laughs> besides this channel oh jameson give me give me your number i'm gonna show you a whole bunch more stuff Why do you say that? than just this channel i'm not saying comparison but like how cool it would be if they found out what else is on youtube oh gotcha you know you know you like barbecue lays most of the time but sometimes you want salt and vinegar <laughs> right that's what this is so welcome to youtube um uh, do you ever get, uh, if you have problems with predators at all, we are joining the adventure of starting meat rabbits this spring. Um, we have a six foot tall privacy fence uh, surrounding our yard. All the rabbits are in cages. The chickens are free roam. Uh, but if that weren't good enough, none of our animals are armed. So our predators, the predators around the neighborhood don't actually actively hunt them. You're feeling spicy today. Because there's no sport in it. He's, he's like feeling spicy today or something. Um, but um, no, no predators. Yeah, we don't have predator problems. Not, I mean, I've not seen the first snake. I've not even seen a raccoons here, I don't think. Well, Melody actually just lost a chicken to a raccoon. That's sad. I'm yeah. sorry. Not a pretty sight. Uh, she's scared for the rabbits having heart attacks if they see the raccoons trying to get to them. Love your channel in Oregon here. Oregon! Hello, Oregon. Um... Is that a myth or is that real? Bunnies having heart attacks from fright. No, they can. They can. They can't. Well, they can, but I feel like it'd be more likely you would have a broken back from a rabbit like freaking out in their cage and like breaking their back. I feel like that's more likely than a heart attack. Mm. Speaking of that. Yeah, we've dealt with a couple of broken backs this year. It's not been fun, so. Um... Do you think rabbits or quail would be easier to start off with? We are leaning towards three rabbits first. Um, rabbits are more fun. Rabbits are more fun. They are. They're also cuter. Rabbits um, are more fun and at least, okay, but you also have to understand that you're coming to a channel that is very, very biased towards rabbits. So, I mean, I'm going to say that. They're very fun. Um, they smell less bad their manure anyway quail poop a lot like they poop a lot so i don't know um i think there's less equipment that you need to get started with rabbits because when i think of quail i think oh incubator brooder like all these expensive things but with rabbits you really don't need a whole whole lot to get started so yeah i don't know I could have sworn I've seen this question before, and I'm sorry we missed it the first time, but I'm glad you reposted it. Um, have you ever had a buck successfully breed without a fall off? Um, I have silver fox buck that bred the doe three times, but I did not see an actual fall off like my other buck. Oh, um, it can happen. Um, I, I mean, well... I would say more than likely if there's no fall off, then probably not, but also there's exceptions to any rule. So, I mean, it could happen, uh, but probably not. I don't know if that's going to be very helpful to you. I, I wouldn't count it as a successful breeding if there's no fall off, though, personally. 
And you, I mean, let's see, I mean, what, I don't know what you mean by I have a silver fox buck that bred the doe three times but didn't have a fall off because, and that, I wouldn't call that a, a I would, I wouldn't call that a breeding then, but I don't know. Absinthos is the one that sent the Sakofi. She says, Jameson, do you know how much both of you have been huge inspirations to... She said, uh, Absinthos sent us like a Ko-Fi and a Super Chat just now. Oh, well, I was actually in the middle of typing her. Um, so thank you so much. <laughs> she, uh, you have been on my channel for so long. Like, she was on the channel when I was still Felix. Um... I haven't heard that name in 1,200 years. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, I actually made this YouTube channel in 2000, 2009 um, when YouTube was very young still. And I got on, like, I used to be kind of a, like, a an animator slash, uh, just, I would do, like, lots of digital paintings and stuff. And it would all revolve around, like, dogs, wolves, like, canine creatures type of thing. Um, so I've been on YouTube for a really long time and like, I gained, when I was younger, I gained, I was 17 at the time, I gained like probably two or 3,000 subscribers and then I, for some reason, well, I, I reset the channel. I downloaded all my videos and then I reset the channel and I actually ended up losing all of my videos from when I was younger. So that is like devastating. I still think of that sometimes and I still get really, really sad. Um, but Absinthos has been there for a lot of that. Like that's a long time to follow somebody. So thank you so much because your comments always mean a lot to me. It's like, you know, you, you watched somebody like grow, like it's been a, 12 years. And I am looking forward to more from you so I can make more music to it. Yes. Take that to the bank. Yeah, that was a lot of fun for you. It really, really was. My, what? One of two clients that I've had at this point. I, I love it because like you gave me a reference point of like what to work with, like what you like to listen to. Yeah. And I was able to go off of that and it worked. And that... It was a long time ago when I had this, I guess, dream of making music for people. Um, it didn't pan out, but when I get to, I love it. So yeah, um, thank you for that opportunity as well. Hannah says, who is the cute bun bun in your lap? Is it vanilla? It's not vanilla. It's Drizzle. We don't know what her name is. We established it with 20 likes. <laughs> um, I know you were there for that. I'm not sure if we're keeping her or not, so I'm trying not to get attached as I hold her in my lap for an hour. Um, but this is Dolce and Clove's daughter. And I'm not sure if she's staying. I really, really like her. The problem is I have a family that really wants a creme d'argent dough to get started with creams. And I've already got I've already got creme d'argents, obviously, but like I still want to hold some back. So I, I have to decide if she's going to a family that needs her to start creams or if she's gonna be retained because she's nice for me to keep producing more of them. So it's it's a whole situation. I need to decide what, what's happening with her. Um, oh my gosh, back when you were doing spirit mashups. <laughs> I, that, that makes me, nobody's gonna understand what that means, but that makes me laugh. Hmm. Mashups. Um, you guys though, the super chats, we love them. The Ko-Fi actually takes less percentage. <laughs> and we we appreciate the Ko-Fi's. We, we appreciate both. We appreciate both of them, but YouTube takes probably 40% of my super chats. I hate to say that. It it's awful to say, but yeah, it's I mean, it's just the truth. <laughs> um In my area, California and New Zealand seems to be the most common meat rabbit. What is your opinion on them? And do you think they compare to your silver fox? How do you think they compare to your silver fox? California and New Zealand is probably the most common meat rabbit everywhere. In the United States, anyway. 
Um, so honestly, if you're just going for meat production, they're going to be probably the best breed that you can get for that. Um, the thing about the silver foxes and the creams, at least the silver foxes, I think, I think creams are heritage breeds too. I know silver foxes are, I'm pretty sure creams are too. Somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong, but, um, the heritage breeds are just like a hardier type of rabbit because they've not been overbred. Um, a lot of the, the Californians and New Zealands I find, well, I don't find cause I've never had them before, but like they're more, they can be more susceptible to genetic weird things going on, sickness. I don't know that. I don't know that for sure. I've just read that. So I could be just talking nonsense right now, but I just prefer the heritage breeds because they're hardier and they've not been overbred um, to the point where it's kind of like, okay, it's kind of like this, you know, the Cornish cross chicken, uh -huh. it grows super fast. Uh -huh. but it's got a so, <laughs> but it's got a lot of like physical problems like once it actually gets older so that's kind of what i compare it to um my rabbits like the the heritage breed rabbits are just a little bit hardier for longer i guess i don't know that's that's just what i've i hope that that's not nonsense to some people that's just what i have read and i've experienced a lot of good things with these guys too they have really great immune systems look at her she's so so um but yeah so it's just how i believe i just like the heritage breeds more but if you're just going for meat then i would say yeah new zealand and californian i have a doe and a buck mini rex did you answer that you think it's too late in the season to breed no they're ready anytime any day yeah, right now is right now is uh, the time that I'm buckling down and breeding as much as I can. What? Someone says Drizzle's a good name. <laughs> yeah, right now is the time where I am breeding as much as I possibly can because I don't breed. I wasn't breeding at all this summer because it was just so hot and wet and just not. It wasn't a good time for breeding. Um, but every month for the last like two or three months we've had uh like two litters born every month so we have oh actually cassia and clover due tomorrow so we should have more creme de argent babies tomorrow um or the next day i feel like they usually give birth on day 32 more um but yeah this is like the perfect time to breed rabbits is when it's cooler outside because they have a much easier time when it's cooler outside than in the summer so what I do. I love my litters in the fall. They grow like nice winter coats. She's so fluffy. But yeah, they grow nice winter coats. Um, and they just, I don't know, they just feel like they're at their best in the winter. They eat more, so they grow faster. Mm. Will you be keeping any from Raj's litter? Is that what you're getting ready to read? I was reading about uh, Jasmine, she lives in Texas where it gets really hot. You don't say! Like, it's almost Thanksgiving and it was 80 degrees today. Well, I hate you. Um, <laughs> why'd you have to bring that negative energy here? <laughs> yeah, You knew I'd be jealous and you just <laughs> dropped it in there. It's been like 20 degrees at night. It's not fun. Go put on your swimsuit. Go away. <laughs> no, we love you here. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, Oh uh, my um, goodness. I don't know how you keep the route. I don't know. I feel like it's easier to combat, you know, keeping the rabbits warmer in the winter than it is to keep them cooler in hot temperatures. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Because like, it's, it's a lot easier to keep them, them warm in the winter. Yeah. It's like, like it's, uh, it's so much easier to, to raise rabbits in the cold. Just, I don't know. Does they have these warm? I mean, I hate the saying, like, if you're cold, your rabbit's cold. It's not true at all. I have no fur like anywhere except my head well this hair but like i have no fur they have like fur coats on all the time so they're they're constantly like imagine summer but you wear your your winter coat outside that would be really really hot so i mean like in the winter they're they're just fine just keep them drying out of the wind she's gonna go somewhere else looks like <laughs> she's done 
I'm just so excited because she's eight weeks old and she's she's so big. She's over four pounds. So we're getting to the point where we're we're finally getting some big creams, and that makes me really happy. Um, somebody Hannah said, "Will you be keeping any from Raj's litter?" And yeah, maybe I'm gonna. I'm thinking about it. It just really depends on what they look like, um, because the thing about Raja is that he he was a nice thick rabbit, but he didn't have any depth, um, so he was kind of flat, if that makes sense. Um, and Mira is also a little bit flat, so I'm hoping that the babies don't. I'm hoping that we don't just get like a whole bunch of little flat babies because <laughs> I really want to use one of them for Twix because yeah, they're dilute carriers because Raja was lilac. So I wanted to use one of the babies from that litter to breed to Twix eventually, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to keep one if it's going to be just flat, you know, I want to, I want to improve the chocolates. I don't want to just breed to have chocolates if that makes any sense. Mm. Drop the co-pi link. How do I do that? It's in the description. The description? Yeah. X, X. X, 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 X. And then drop down. And whoop. There you go. No, we'll just copy it. Oh, my apologies. Um... <gasps> Tammy's here. She's the one that said, hey, babe, sorry I'm late. That's, I thought that was Blue Dog. That is Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one with the daughter named Cassia. I don't know no Tammy. I only know Blue Dog now. No, she's the one that said Cassia? <laughs> Cassia? Jameson still, we love that video. <laughs> Jameson still cracks up about that. <laughs> um, It will only be copy-paste. It won't? No. Let so if somebody it. wants to type what I say. Wait, no, no, let me see. Can't get it right now. Oh, well, just open it in Safari and then copy the link. Um. <laughs> uh, Blue Dog says, how did you get into showing? Um, so I started showing when I was in 4-H. Uh, when I was 11, I think. So from the time I was 11 to 18, I showed in 4-H. And I think I did either one or two open shows. And then when I got back into Rabbits, now that I'm an adult, I just went ahead and started doing a whole bunch of open shows. So now we just go to like a whole bunch of shows all the time. We haven't been going to a whole bunch lately just because we don't have a lot of show Rabbits. And... I, I need to do shows where there's actually cream showing. Where are you going? What are you doing? Um, it's hard to find a show where creme de argents are showing. So, uh, but I'm hoping that I'll, I'll be at a show in December and I'm hoping that we'll have some creams there because I actually paid to sanction them. Um, so hopefully we'll have some creams there, but I don't have a lot of silver Fox babies that I'm like really excited about right now. Cause I've, I've got Sprig and I've got Onyx and I've got Tundra and they're all grand champions already. And so when you have a rabbit that's already granded out, it's kind of like, it's kind of boring to go to a show and show a rabbit that's like already granded out because like there's nothing left that you can accomplish at that point, if that makes any sense. So, um, but I love showing and hoping that we're going to be getting with all of the breedings that we're doing, I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot of nice spring, like, show quality babies. So that would be really exciting. I feel like I'm so far behind. Uh, we just got a whole bunch of questions, at the, but uh, we can just do rapid fire. Rosemary, hi, my husband and I are new to the little rabbit tree. Uh, our buck rushes to us when he sees us when we're going to feed him. Is there a minimum we should be feeding him? Um more like, is there a maximum? And the answer is no. What is the bottomless mean? breadsticks? No, Olive what, Garden. What is the breed? I don't know. She didn't say that. Where is this comment at? By Rosemary. We know Rosemary. We love Rosemary. Wait, I know, but oh, there it is. No, I was trying to find the comment. Um, 
depends on what the breed is, but I mean, like, if it's a if it's a meat rabbit, yeah, give him. Like, I, I mean, most most of my rabbits, like the six class rabbits, anyway, most of them eat about a cup a day. So, I mean, they get like unlimited, but most of them eat about a cup a day. You better not pee on the couch. A cup a day. Okay, there's your minimum. Well, yeah, there's your minimum at least, but. All right. Uh, do you have any advice on someone who might want bun buns, but they have a dog who uh, met some wild baby bun buns and played with them? <laughs> have you met Ronan? Yeah, our dog is our our dog Ronan is a terrier. He's a dog. terrier. He is bred to hunt bun buns and uh, other small game. Yeah. Um. You know what? You just got to have a great bond with your dog because yeah. they know they know that they cannot touch. The rabbits. They love to chase the chickens, but they cannot touch the rabbits or the quail because mommy loves them. Well, I I was getting I I had somebody ask me like how did I train my dog like with the rabbits and the chickens and stuff. It's it's been a combination of positive and negative reinforcement. Um, basically, like telling them they've done a good job and giving them treats when they do a good job, and then like catching them in the act when they've done a bad job. Um, and then also. Just a lot of them uh, being exposed to the chickens and the rabbits, like through a fence or through a cage, without actually being able to get to them, it kind of desensitizes them to being around them. If that makes any sense, um, so that's kind of how we did it. I mean, our chickens when we very first had our chickens, they were behind uh, permanent. Uh, what's it called? Premier One permanent, like the electric fence. So. Ronan kind of got the idea that, oh, hey, he's not supposed to go past the fence. So, and then when we started letting them out, he was already familiar with the idea of those are off limits. So now it's just, now it's easy. I mean, he, he still goes after the chickens every once in a while, but he knows that he's not supposed to hurt them. So it does take training and we were concerned about it at first, but um, as long as I'm out there watching him, he usually does a good job. Uh, well, someone said it. I had it. Um, da, 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 well, someone asked us what we do to care for. Oh, yeah. Kayla says also, what is the care for your bees in the colder months? Uh, let them suffer. Payback. No, we actually checked the hive this last weekend. Um, they did not make any honey for us, right? Everything that they have is the, for them. Uh, but they were not in the top super that we put so we could have honey. They didn't touch it. They just kind of hung out there loitering um, for most of the season and, the season. and then they went back into the deep brood. So they're there, and I can see them huddling in there keeping warm. Uh, but they're not doing much now that it's been colder. In fact, if we were to say that uh, it snowed the last couple days in Indiana, no one would believe us because there's no snow. Yeah, it <laughs> But it snowed. Here. Tammy, I hope you're okay. I saw that you were in a car accident. We didn't talk about that? I hope you're okay. Yeah, that's... I hope you are okay. That is scary because you just went... Like, she just went to the hospital yesterday as well, so... Girl, <laughs> I really, really hope you're okay. I'll be messaging you later. Likes and prayers to Blue Dog. Yeah. Um, JK says, in researching diet, I see rabbits should eat... Percent pellets, percent vegetables, percent hay, percent treats. But how the heck do you compare pellets to bok choy to hay to freeze-dried bananas? <laughs> um, you're probably reading the House Rabbit Society uh, standard of nutrition. Honestly, when breeding rabbits, I wouldn't suggest... <sighs> I don't know. I People kind of get on me about this because I don't, I don't hate the house rabbit society like standard of, of nutrition but also i'm not a pellets only breeder like i'm very much about like you should give like i i give unlimited pellets i give unlimited hay because i do think that hay is very important i know that pellets are made with hay i still think roughage actual like chewing of the hay is important so i think hay is very important i like to give my rabbits vegetables too um but like in the form of leafy greens. And then every once in a while they'll get treats too. So like, like you said, like dried bananas or um, we have like apple horse treats that our rabbits really like. So 
Honestly, okay. don't stress out about it too much. When it comes to pellets, um, they are a balanced, complete feed. So your rabbit is getting the nutrition that it needs, but I do think that you know adding fresh things here and there and unlimited hay is always a good idea. So don't stress too much about nutrition. Some people take it way too far. <laughs> uh, it ties into treats too, you know. Rabbits go cuckoo for cocoa puffs when they see pine cones. Yeah, they love pine cones. So if you want to bake some, like get down to the winter months, yeah. they love those. Well, yeah, and that's, I did a video on that last year, I think, um, but like with pine cones and stuff, like you want to bake them before you actually give them to the rabbits because the sap, like once, when they bake and then they dry, the sap hardens, so the sap won't like cause a big like mess all over your rabbit and like mat their fur and stuff, but it also kills parasites inside of the pine cone, so... Uh, I would I would recommend baking them first. <laughs> do you have any more burbs or just chimkins? We uh, do not have any other bird species. Well, quail. <laughs> uh, we have quail and chickens. Quail uh, and so chicken. kind of yes, but if you meant on top of that, uh, no. But we're thinking about Muscovy ducks um, when lots of acreage and a nice little home in the country is yeah. in our future. Well, we're not getting... You guys know I said I wasn't adding, I'm not adding any more animals, I don't think, unless it's something like super easy. But like, I don't think that we can do ducks here because I think they would make a muddy mess in our backyard. Um, so we probably won't do the ducks here, unfortunately. We were planning on breeding salmon favorols, um, like the chicken breed, salmon favorol. But um, our rooster passed away at the end of October. So that is no longer something that we're going to be doing. So that's okay. Um, it just wasn't meant to be. But it will be later because I love that breed of chicken. It's my favorite breed of chicken. Uh, uh, someone said my rabbits have sore hocks. What do I do? It can depend on a lot of things, actually. I take a look at what they're walking on or um, maybe what they're stepping in. So whenever somebody asks um, what... Can you get rid of some of those comments? Uh, whenever somebody... Sorry, guys. We got... I just sort of showed up. Yeah, can you get rid of them? I'm doing it now. Okay. Uh, anyway... The what was the question? Uh, rabbits have sore hawks. What do oh, you do? Oh yeah. So whenever we okay, so whenever somebody says they have sore hawks, I'm always like, okay, so what is the rabbit like? What are they on? Like, is it a wire bottom floor? If it's a wire bottom floor, what gauge of floor is it? Because 19 gauge, like the standard hardware cloth wire floor, isn't good for rabbits. And I know, like, my rabbit tractors are made with, like, the 19-gauge, like, wire bottom flooring. It's not the best flooring for rabbits. Um, so I would recommend adding plastic resting mats if that's what your rabbit is on. Uh, if not, if it's on a 14 or 16-gauge wire bottom floor, then they shouldn't be developing problems from the floor itself. Uh, it could be caused by either weak genetics um, or your rabbit got an injury and then it just kind of like became like if it's on both hawks then it's probably not an injury but if it's just one hawk then it could have been injury that just developed into sore hawks um, but to treat it really you just want to you can take like gauze you can try to do this anyway you can try to take gauze and like um, put like some neosporin not neosporin uh, it's got to be without pain reliever I know because like the pain reliever is like something about pain reliever in antibiotic ointment for rabbits isn't good for them. So like teramycin ointment would be a good option. Um, so just put some teramycin ointment. I can't say that teramycin ointment on your rabbits like hawk and then you can wrap it in gauze or you can just clean it really well and just put down like hay and straw in their cage so they have that to walk on. Um, sore hawks are really tough because sometimes when they get sore hawks, it's really hard to get rid of them. You can do it for sure, but uh, it does take some extra care. So I don't know. Um, a lot of the time if a rabbit has sore hawks, I feel like it's usually genetic. So you probably, 
I probably would reconsider breeding a rabbit that's getting sore hocks if it's young anyway. If it's an older rabbit, that's kind of a different story. But yeah, I would look at the gauge of flooring that you're on. You might have actually responded to me here, but. Um... Got anything for me? Do you mix your own chicken feed? No, we got a feed dealer. Chicken feed? We don't go to the feed dealer for the chicken feed. Could have fooled me. We go to Tractor Supply. I forgot, yeah, when I burst in there saying, chicken feed! And then I <laughs> threw 50 pound bags over my uh, over my head and came back to the counter and they sold me licorice. Yes. <laughs> that story needs no context, so don't ask. They know us at Tractor Supply. Um, I'll be right back. Where are you going? You don't need to know. Why? Oh, you're getting... <laughs> um, will I be getting more... Oh, you've summoned Ronan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do we really have 40 likes? I guess maybe this isn't showing me the correct thing here. Um... <laughs> We will be keeping more creme de argents, yes, especially because I'm going to be creating like that indoor hutch soon, you guys. So that's going to be a build video soon. You'll have to watch it. And it's honestly, it has to be like within the next two weeks because I'm running out of room out there. <laughs> There's a lot of rabbits out there right now. We did not get to 30 likes. I made a promise, did we but not? I am a merciful God. <laughs> you can hold it right up to the thingy. Ari. We got a little peeper. <laughs> fly! Don't let it fly away. Yeah, so this is a uh, little guy just thinking of a name. Is that one of the... Oh, it's a German. Is it a German? It's one of those... I think... I told you guys I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to quilt, but it looks like one of those German pastels. It's got a little poop ball hanging off of its foot. Don't tell me that. <laughs> German, huh? I'm naming you Helga. Helga? We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. It's a unisex name. It's 21st century. <laughs> the bitty quail. There's so many animals in this picture right now. Look. <laughs> How are we at 43 likes right now? I only see 23. <laughs> I know. I was confused about that as well. 44? What are you guys? You guys are lying. Well, oh, you want to play. I don't think that we're seeing what they're I doing. was a substitute teacher. I know <laughs> how this goes. All right. Oh, Lord. Hi. Anybody here from Germany? <laughs> Anybody got any good names? Well, this has been a very, this has been a very chill live stream, guys. Sorry about the technical difficulties at the very beginning of it. But, you know, we made up for it with, uh, with a quail, quail baby, so and a stop baby. pestering us about the technical difficulties. And a bunny difficulties. baby. And a bunny baby. Helga or Fritz? Oh, I love that. Fritz. That's a great name. Thank you. Very smart. I like that. Um, Look at Ari. I'll, Look um, it. Probably going to get off, though. It's in, uh, yeah, a couple minutes. Um, we're almost at an hour. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we appreciate you joining our fireside chat uh, with uh, bunnies and Egyptian milk tea. So we appreciate that. Uh, so brew yourself a pot next time. Join us at your computer and uh, we'll... Brew yourself a pot of tea. Brew yourself a pot of tea. I didn't say pot of tea. I said brew yourself a pot. People are seeing... So I'm very confused because we're... Like the live stream is stuck for us at 23 likes and 25 people here. But on here, I'm seeing that there's 42 people here. 42 people here, but 44 likes. Which is awesome. Mm. And you guys, 47 likes. <laughs> thank, thank you guys so much for for all of your support and stuff. I am trying to make more video. This has been... It's been a tough last month for us to like get stuff done and whatnot. Um car problems and whatnot didn't actually the car problems didn't last like too too long but it's still one of the things that was like the main source of my anxiety last month so um that thing is gonna fly away i'll take five oh, it just pooped. <laughs> this is my favorite brand new shirt <laughs> it's got a poop ball on it well my day is ruined i'm back here get that poop
poop. I'll get it in a second. You can't <laughs> even see it. It's like five likes and five wanna more see, likes. I want to see if I can I can replay that and watch the poop roll down your shirt. Why would you want to watch that? We're going to get flagged <laughs> for feces. Feces. Get that poop all off of I'm him. I'm going to put him back. Well, get it off of him. Poor thing. No. He can't, he can't do it himself. I'm not cleaning the poop off his bird. <laughs> okay. Well, it has been an hour, guys. So I think we're going to get off of here. But it's been a good live stream. It's been a nice, chill live stream. Jameson's got to clean the poop off of his shirt. <laughs> I got to go put this bunny back and feed the rest of them. We'll have a, another live stream sooner than the last one was. The last one was in September. So we're going to try. Oh, my God, really? I, yeah, so it's been a while. So we'll have another one a little bit sooner than that. Um, but thank you guys all for hanging out with us. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys.